single-handedly started Wheelie in 2009 from the small town of Crested Butte, Colorado. After almost every business in town had a new logo and brand identity, she moved to Whitefish to grow her business into a full-fledged creative agency, which opened a new office in Denver, Colorado, in the summer of 2017. Give it up for Lisa! Hi. So, yes, my name is Lisa Slagle, and I own Wheelie Creative. Um, it's the first building on the right when you go over the viaduct with the giant W sign. So contrary to popular belief, we are not a bike shop. We do not build wooden children's toys, um, but we do build brands. So we do quite a bit of design, branding, video, photo, digital, and strategy. And it is extremely fun. Um, fun is our guiding I guess our guiding force, we have a funnel meter and any client that we take on or any employee we hire has to fit on our funnel meter or it's just not a good match. That's okay, we're gonna get into that later. Um, and we work locally, but we mostly work nationally. And I'm just gonna play a quick reel so that you can see the kind of work that we do. Yeah, it's, it's quite fun. Um, I, yeah, and I am, I'm just the nature of our creative work is so fun and we get to hang off the side of cliffs with cameras and we get to build great brands and um, I'm so, so grateful for all the people who work for me, who are, have ever worked for me and all the brands that we get to work with and the people that are connected to those businesses because it's awesome. Um, but it hasn't always been easy and it's been really, really hard, actually. Um, there's just a handful of the companies we work with or we have worked with. Um, because I've been in business for the nine years. So I started the company in Crested Butte, Colorado from like an old laptop and I would hand out business cards on chairlifts and I would shred all day and I'd work all night and it was really hard. It, it was a lot of learning and a lot of hard work and um, I just kept working harder and harder and harder. And living in a mountain town is awesome. I absolutely love living in mountain towns. I've lived in five of them. And um, I moved to Whitefish in 2012 and have been here ever since and started hiring employees, growing the business, and then put another office back in Denver to just bring the shit show full circle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so after a decade, there has been a lot of success. There have been a lot of mistakes. There are a couple take backs. I would just love to take back. Um, but, the, but it really has been amazing. And I don't know a lot about a lot, but I can tell you what I do know. And um, what I do know is when you, when you own a business, you have to make decisions constantly. You have to make decisions nonstop, no matter what happens. You have to call the shots, whether you know the answer or not, and you have to do so to lead your team with intelligence and grace and hopefully some type of knowledge. <laughs> um, and it's hard, right? And um, in a mountain town, it's even more interesting because there's so much you can't plan for. You cannot plan for wildfires, and you cannot plan for low snow years that affect the economy, and you cannot plan for huge snow years that collapse the roof on your office again. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just can't plan for that, and, and you have to power through it and call the shots anyway. And uh, enough about me, let's talk about you. So 
We're going to play a game, but I, so just think about the answers here, but we're going to play Would You Rather. Um, because we'll start easy. Let's start easy and it'll get harder. So would you rather, just think about the answer, work from home or get an office? If you get an office, you have to put pants on, but people will probably respect you more. <laughs> would you rather hire employees which come with a whole bunch of strings attached, and then you don't limit your success, or would you rather do all the work yourself and limit the scope of what you can do? But you get to keep all the profit margins. Would you rather sit in traffic or sit on a chairlift? That one's, that one's real easy. Um, and these are just some of the decisions that you have to make, and this game is gonna get harder, right? But before this game gets harder, I wanna let you in on one secret I know that you can turn into your decision-making superpower. And that is you need to know what you stand for. And this is not what you do, this is, this is what you stand for, this is why you do it. And you have to know what you stand for. All great brands know what they stand for. So Patagonia stands for conservation, Carhartt stands for being tough, uh, what Prana stands for, sustainably sourced things. But we know what they stand for, and they're consistent, and they show up in the same way every single time, and they never, ever deviate from what they stand for. And you have to stand for something, or else you stand for nothing. And that's the worst. <laughs> and I, So I like to always just say that your brand is what people say about your business when you're not in the room to explain it. It's just an easy way to do it, so make sure that you're able to tell people what you stand for so that they know what you stand for. And in marketing, it's super common. We just do this thing, everybody does uh, the mission, vision, and values. So make sure that you do this frequently with your business. So your mission, why you do what you do, your vision, which is your version of a better future, and your values, which are the traits that make you why the way that you are. Um, and just make sure you define these and make your employees know them and be able to recite these things in your sleep because when you add all these things together, they equal what you stand for. And you, you have to know. And um, make sure this is literally on everything. On our website, what we stand for is right on the front of our website. We believe life should be lived, felt, and shouted from mountaintops. Um, we stand for fun. We stand for women. We stand for outdoor brands not taking themselves so seriously because working in the outdoor industry is not a necessity to human existence, but it sure as hell enhances it. <laughs> and so, and then we list these, these ethos, right? These are right on our website. And every single project we take on, every employee, every person that we interact with has to fall into these buckets of gratitude and respect, adventure and misadventure, guts and grit. That's, we'd never ever deviate from this, and this, knowing what we stand for, makes our decision making easy. It makes it so easy. It takes, it takes all these subjective things and it makes them objective. It takes all the guesswork out and it makes it so that you can lead your team without trying to figure out how to lead yourself. And so, Okay, we're going to play Would You Rather again, but it's going to be a little harder, and I want you to think about these guiding, uh, guiding things and what you stand for, and try to answer these questions with what you stand for in mind. So would you rather make $10,000 more per year or ski powder days? Easy. Uh, would you rather relocate the talent that you want here to maximize you know, the output and quality of your work? Or would you rather just wait it out and know that people in Montana live in the woods and they don't come to town that often? <laughs> <laughs> and they're out there, but they're just hard to find. <laughs> so do you, are, are you gonna wait it out? And then sales are the lifeblood of any business. So would you rather sell to people who are on vacation or people who never go away? That's the reality. Um, and when you're, you know, when you're in a mountain town, the tourists, they come in, they come out, they leave, they're gone, or you can sell to locals who are always here and constant, and you're going to see them everywhere, and if you don't want to see them, you're going to see them anyway, like 20 times in the next week. 
Uh, so just, just make sure uh, that, that, again, you, you know exactly what you stand for. Because over the last decade, I've worked with tons and tons of brands and businesses, and the ones that make it and the ones that go far, they never, ever, ever deviate from what they stand for. And running a business is hard enough, and then running a business in a town where your best employee could get eaten by a grizzly bear on the weekend is a reality. And, you know, there's enough stuff that's hard, at least to make your decision-making process easy on yourself. And then make sure you fight for it, because there will definitely be haters. If you're going to try something new and, and go for something, not everyone is going to stand for what you stand for. And that's OK. And that's what I was talking about earlier with the fun meter Like, if, if you're a super, super serious brand and a super serious business, we're not a good fit. Go find another agency that's a better fit for maintaining your goals and your strategy. And that's fine. You know, it's not personal. It's just it's, it's about fit. And so if you are willing to fight for what you stand for, you're going to make it. You're going to make it big. And so, you know, we are mountain people. Everybody in this room is a mountain person. And we are not meant for cities. And no, <laughs> uh, we're just not made for cities. And if we have the fortitude and the strength to make it through cold, cold, gray winters year after year after year, we certainly have the fortitude to fight for what we believe in. And so whatever it is that you stand for, whether you stand for the best liquor in town or mobile restaurants or ice cream empires or more people on bikes, what, I see all these faces in the room. Whatever you stand for, fight for it because what you're really fighting for is your vision of a better world and your dream is worth it. Thank you.